Hello and welcome to my channel, the so-called Travel Expert. As my name suggests, I've been traveling around Europe for the last 20 years, first as a backpacker, then as a young couple and more recently with a young family. So since the last couple of years, I've also been publishing videos of our travels to some of the popular tourist destinations in Europe and also some of the less famous uh, tourist destinations as well, which are very popular with the locals. One of the common themes of the questions I receive in the feedback and comment section is to do with budgets. So how much does the accommodation cost? Eating out in restaurants or takeaways, the sightseeing activities for the day and so on. So this video is dedicated to those of you who are currently planning a trip to visit Europe and who are wondering uh, what they should budget for the daily costs. The simplest way to estimate a travel budget, especially when you're considering uh, visiting different countries in Europe for, let's say, around 10 to 15 days, is to break it down into three different subgroups. The first subgroup is the fixed costs, uh, which are things like uh, the visa, if you require one, the travel and medical insurance and uh, the airfare. So that's one subgroup. Then it's the food and accommodation. So the daily food and accommodation costs, that's the second subgroup. And the third one is the intercity travel between different European cities. And for example, between London and Paris, Paris and Berlin or Paris and Amsterdam and so on. And also once you get to the cities, uh, what are the local travel costs involved? So that's the simplest way of starting to uh, build up, estimate a budget, you know. So let's look at the first subgroup, which is which are the fixed costs, which include the visa, travel insurance and the airfare. So you should keep in mind for those, those of you who require a visa, you should keep in mind uh, that the Schengen visa does not allow you uh, travel to the UK as well. So if you're considering also traveling to London or Scotland for that matter or Ireland, you would require a separate UK visa as well. So the costs for a Schengen visa are around 80 euros and uh, for the UK visa, it's around 115 pounds with an additional 30 to 35 euros as the VFS facilitation fee. The second aspect to consider within uh, these fixed cost subgroup is the travel and medical insurance. Usually, I would say it costs around 20 to 40 uh, euros per person. But that depends on a number of factors, which is your age, whether you're taking out an annual insurance, multi-trip insurance, or whether it's just a one-off insurance as well. And the third part of the fixed cost group is obviously the airfare. Um, now, I've proposed a figure of around 500 to 700, uh, but this depends on a number of factors, such as how much in advance you've booked your tickets. Usually, the sooner you book, the earlier you book, the cheaper they are whether you would prefer a direct flight or a flight with one a stopover and also what your flying distance is or your flying time is. Uh, so this cost estimate of around 500 to 700 usually is valid if you're flying from countries like India or from the east coast of the US, which is usually a flying time of around eight hours or so. If you're flying from further afar, Singapore or from Australia or from the west coast of the US, then obviously your flight tickets might be a bit more expensive as well. So just to summarize the costs of the first subgroup that we have till now, which is uh, the visa costs, the travel and uh, medical insurance and the airfare. The total of these comes to around in the range of uh, 750 to 1000 euros per adult. So let's move on now to the second subgroup, which are uh, the sustenance costs or uh, the daily costs involved for the accommodation and uh, for the food. Now, this is a very subjective topic because some of you who would prefer to travel as backpackers might end up with a much lower cost than what I've quoted here. Whereas some of you who really like to travel in style and luxury might end up with a much higher cost compared to what is quoted here. So the figures that I've come up with uh, are, or rather would be typical for three-star uh, budget hotels. However, these would be in the city center, you know, somewhere close to the train stations. And it will be very convenient if you are considering 
traveling with a lot of luggage uh, and you want your hotel to be close to the train stations and so on. And usually the prices uh, for, for a three-star budget hotel, uh, as I said earlier, would be in the range of 150 to 200 euros per day. Now, obviously, this is uh, for two people sharing the room. So likewise, a price per uh, individual would come out to be in the range of 75 to 100 euros. Now, the next topic, which are the food costs, is also very subjective. And that's why I've given here uh, the budget estimates for two different options as well. Now, if you uh, consider just having a light lunch on the go, uh, you know, at a snack bar or something, followed with a heavy um, or a heavy dinner in the evening, then you could budget around 30 euros per person for the day. And if you're the type who really likes to enjoy uh, your food and you would prefer two sit down meals, one for lunch and for dinner, then it is best that you budget around 50 euros per person per day. What I would also like to remind you uh, here is that uh, since the last two years, inflation in Europe has been quite high and therefore the food prices, uh, especially eating out, dining out in restaurants, have really skyrocketed up. So please budget accordingly. So summarizing the costs again for the second subgroup, which is uh, the accommodation and the food. For the accommodation, you could budget in the range of around 150 to 200 euros per night. And for the food, uh, in the range of around 60 to 100 euros. However, these costs are for two people and therefore uh, the contributions for an individual would be in the range of 100 to 150 euros per day. So let's move on now to the third subgroup, which is uh, the regional travel. That includes the intercity travel between different cities and uh, the local travel once you are at a particular uh, city. So if you've decided that intercity travel by train is the best option, then you could also consider purchasing a Eurail pass. Now, this is a very detailed topic and I might uh, make a separate video on that altogether to discuss the pros and cons of the Eurail pass. But for budgeting purposes, uh, what you should keep in mind is that this pass is available for different du lengths uh, or durations. You can either purchase it for five days in one month, seven days or 10 days, which probably for a two week travel period will be the most relevant options. And the costs per day obviously reduce with uh, the longer uh, the pass duration is. So for budgeting purposes, you can roughly estimate uh, that the pass would cost around anyways between 30 to 60 euros, depending on the number of days that you have this pass for. As for the local travel, uh, there are numerous options. So in big cities like London and Paris, which have a very good underground uh, metro network, you could just purchase a day pass uh, if you know how to travel uh, on the underground system, which obviously is quite easy as well. If you are not confident of uh, traveling or using the underground uh, system, then you could just simply purchase a day pass or a two day pass for these uh, big bus. The speciality of these big bus tours is that uh, you don't, do not even have to bother with finding your tourist destination. These buses just keep circling around the city all day and you can literally hop on and hop off at any tourist destination that you want. So considering the local travel, on an average, you could budget around 15 to 25 euros per adult per day. So let's summarize the cost for the third subgroup, uh, which is the regional travel, that is the intercity and the local travel as well. So assuming you've gone for a Eurail pass, depending on which pass you have uh, chosen, your costs might be in the range of 40 to 60 euros per day per adult. And the local travel within the cities, depending on which day pass you buy, could be in the range of 15 to 25 euros per day. So for your regional travel costs, you could budget around 55 to 85 euros per day. And finally, let's summarize the costs for the three individual groups and estimate a budget for a 14 day multi-city trip through Europe. So the first subgroup, uh, which was the upfront fixed costs, sum up to around 750 to 1000 euros. 
Obviously, the biggest contributor there is the airfare. The second subgroup, which is uh, the food and the accommodation, contributes a major chunk as well. So your accommodation costs turn out at around 1,000 to 1,400 euros per person over the whole 14-day period. Um, and the food costs come up at around 420 to 700 euros. Now, obviously, these are subjective and depending on your lifestyle and your choices, these could be slightly higher or lower than what I have quoted here. And finally, for the third subgroup, which is the regional travel, the travel between the different cities in Europe and the local city travel, that sums up to around 300 to 400 euros for the intercity travel and around 100 to 175 or 200 for the regional, the city travel. So the sum of all these three subgroups works out at around 2,600 on the lower range to 3,600 on the higher range. So you could you could assume uh, safely estimate a budget of around 3,000 per adult for a 14-day uh, European trip. So I'll be following up this video with a few other short videos as well such as, you know, how does the individually planned Europe trip compare with an organized group tour? Uh, you know, the advantages and disadvantages and what are the pitfalls uh, of a URail pass? And something which has really re-emerged uh, in popularity in Europe in the last few years is also this concept of overnight trains, which should kind of also save you time on traveling between cities and also save on your accommodation costs. And based on these uh, short videos, uh, it should help you to plan and identify which is the best option for your European trip. So I hope you found this video useful. Uh, if so, please do leave a positive comment and also please consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. Thank you.